please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The expected has happened. Uh, good morning and welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me are Anuj and Sonia. Yes, that 25 basis hike was expected. And the Fed has actually for the moment maintained that there will be only two more in 2018. But that was a wafer thin vote. One more vote in the dot chart and it could have been four interest rate hikes uh, for 2018. That is three more. Uh, more importantly, even in 2019-20, there is a switch in terms of a higher indication by the dot chart. So in 2020, the Fed fund futures will indicate 3.4% as the target rate rather than 3.1%. That was the case. Okay, these are the numbers. Broadly, the um, Fed is telling you that we may have to hike rates a little more aggressively than what we said in our previous uh, meeting. The market uh, took it nicely, primarily because it came with a higher GDP growth projection, and those numbers are coming up for you. Uh, GDP projections increased by 30 basis and 20 basis in uh, 2018 and in 2019. So higher growth and therefore slightly more aggressive Fed, but not higher inflation. All told, uh, at the moment, we are having green on the screen. Uh, Asian uh, markets as well as DSGX Nifty. Clearly, now the Fed event is over, we will be looking back at domestic factors. Mm. And domestically, my sense is for two days, we are chopping between 10,050 and 10,250. We've got some positive indications. The Credit Suisse report on SBI, I would think, sounds positive. After all, banks have been the pain point. So it looks like for the moment, uh, 10,000 is not giving away in a hurry. Well, that's for now. Let's <laughs> discuss. Hi. Morning, both of you. Hi, Lata. Morning, Anuj. Morning. Uh, Ten thousand is not giving away, but yesterday, I guess you know that uh, the, the selling off so, at higher levels just goes to show that this market is unable to hold that that two hundred right. day moving yeah, the fear average. Of heights it, it, it closed below that yesterday, so I guess there's still a problem pocket in the market, right? A lot of heavyweights, ICICI Bank, SBI, TCS falling quite a bit. Uh, so the question we're asking is: if This is still a bear grip, I'm sure, on, in the market, but is this still a sell on rally market? Uh, Anuj, morning. You've been saying that. For for a while that you know this market yeah. will give you uh, a lot more money making opportunities if you sell the rallies yes. and that's what we saw yesterday as well uh, is this a trend that could sustain through the course of the week yeah uh, morning sonia so look uh, the issue here is uh, that you have to respect the market and uh, the, uh, you know while 90 percent of us or all of us would want the market to go up for obvious reasons uh, uh, the fact is that it's not necessary that the market goes up in a linear manner. It did last year. Last year's template was, and the market's template was very clear, you buy all the dips, you make money. This year's template has been very clear that you sell rallies and you make money. So uh, as of now, the market will give you a signal whether that's reverse. But for now, that's the market's template and you make money if you respect that template. Uh, yesterday, for example, uh, from the highs and the market beautifully went into that resistance zone of 10,180 to 200. For a moment, it crossed that, went to 10,227. Yeah. But from there, it had an 80-point decline. Now, bears won't be scared by this 30, 40-point uptake. If at all, they would be really happy with 30, 40-point uptake. Last year, if you were getting on any day 30, 40 downtake, you were happy, right, that you could, could buy. Of course, it's not necessary that, you know, every day is uh, like sell-on rally. Some days would be that the market closes at the high point. But this market, you know, needs to go to 10,500 or 600 to scare the bears. Mm. Till then, uh, you know, 30, 40 points, 100 points here or there won't scare the bears. Uh, and the FIR data still remains very interesting. Even yesterday, there was aggressive selling in the index futures. Uh, uh, and the index futures long positions are now down to 40.7%. Uh, they added about 10,000 shorts and unbound about 6,000 longs. So we are getting near the point from where a possible and powerful short covering bounce is possible. But keeping in mind that we are close to expiry, and this time expiry happens on Wednesday mm. because Thursday is market holiday. Yes. So technically, oh. uh, you know, there are only four or five days yes. for uh, the expiry. And today's weekly options expiry on banks as well. Unless you take out yesterday's high, which is 10,227 on the Nifty and about closer to 24,500 on the bank nifty. Unless you take that out and start to trade above that, there's a good chance that any bounce would be sold into. And more important would be to watch the market breadth. Yesterday, it started at 5 is to 1 in favor of advances. It ended in favor of decliners. So that is something to keep an eye on. Uh, so for me, as I said, uh, this market's message is clear. It's a sell-on rally market in the near term unless something changes and you scare the bears, which would happen with perhaps a 200, 300 point rally. Right now, you don't see a possibility of that. Now, fundamentally, at least, there's no poss there, there doesn't seem a possibility. Yeah. But I feel fundamentally, as well, the bad news, for instance, uh, you know, much bigger NPLs mm. and therefore lower earnings growth, 
seem to be very much in the market's thinking. Mm. And so, uh, unless there is fresh bad news, which doesn't uh, seem to be there, at least today, uh, the market doesn't have to even break down. There, yes. there are no reasons for breakdown either, as of now, in the short term. Okay, there, we must not forget also there's been huge supply of paper as far as the IPO market is concerned, right? I mean, it's been the busiest week for us in terms of IPOs in a very long time. And today, you have the 4,000 crore uh, ICICI security IPO that opens as well. So lots of action lined up over there. But let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Ellen Zentner of Morgan Stanley says, as expected, the FOMC voted to raise its target range for the federal funds rate by 25 basis points to 1.5 to 1.75%. She says nearly everything else regarding the statement and projections was hawkish. While the median continued to reflect three hikes in 2018, a clear upward bias could be seen in the mean through 2020. She adds, despite the FOMC's more hawkish path, she continues to expect the Fed to hike three times this year, stopping after the September meeting to assess how much further it is willing to push real rates into positive territory and facing tighter financial conditions. She says after pausing, Morgan Stanley looks for two additional hikes in 2019 where they think the tightening cycle will end at 2.62%. Okay, that's way more dovish than what the Fed is projecting. Now a quick word on Indian stocks. Gautam Chaucharya of UBS says, instead of hoping for a broader KPEX cycle in general, they are recommending focusing on micro opportunities in specific segments exposed to government CapEx growth. He says this has played out uh, in the road sector, which had a steep increase in central government allocations over the past three years. However, he adds, the significant improvement in infrastructure availability in roads implies slower growth going forward. He says there are sizable deficits in select types of urban infrastructure, such as metros, sewage systems and airports. He is overweight property as the sector may be near an inflection point after a six-year lull. Okay, let's also talk about the money markets, right? The rupee has been sitting at a four-month low versus the dollar. Yesterday, it closed at, what, 65.21 or so. Uh, for the day, the projection from Mohan Chinoy of Kotak Mahindra Bank, he says, as expected, the Fed Reserve raised Fed funds rate by 25 basis points to balance inflationary risks with elevated growth momentum. However, he says the dollar weakened across the board as markets reassess the total increases during the year to three. He says the rupee is expected to remain range-bound as general dollar weakness is offset by weak equity markets and higher crude oil prices. He expects the dollar INR pair to trade in a range of 64.95 to 65.25 for the day. Generally, a little bit of strength should be expected because actually the dollar index has fallen from closer to 90 to 89.5. That's yeah. a sizable weakening of, uh, or, I mean, for an intraday, it's a uh, weakening that uh, the exchange rate traders cannot ignore. Bond markets, uh, Bohan Chinoy says, this market is now awaiting the government borrowing calendar for the next year with an expectation of lower duration issuances, that is, shorter tender bonds. He says elevated crude oil prices are expected to impact sentiment in the GSET market, he expects a 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.57, 7.62 for the day. So broadly, yesterday's range. Okay, now let's go across to Nigel for the world view. Well, the U.S. markets ended overnight uh, in the red. All the three indices ended in the red. Remember, we're waiting by for the outcome of the Fed made three broad takeaways. 25 basis points is the hike that we got overnight for 2018. We'll see two more rate hikes. But what they also said was that the increased GDP forecast going ahead, what made them sound a tad bit more hawkish was that for 2019 and 2020, they are factoring in more rate hikes than was earlier perceived. And that's what made, uh, you know, Jerome Powell uh, sound a tad bit more hawkish. Well, moving on then from the social media space, a couple of those stocks they've been getting hit in the last couple of days. Mark Zuckerberg has assured his users as well as investors. And that's why we did see some green on Facebook while Twitter, remember the stock was down 10% in the previous trading session. Yesterday, it did rebound close to around 35 or around 4% odd. All eyes will be on President uh, Trump tomorrow. He's expected to unveil some uh, you know, tariffs on Chinese imports. So that's going to be the crucial, uh, crucial uh, data point that the street is going to be looking at. Well, in terms of European markets, they as well ended more red than green. The, the DAX ended absolutely flat. All eyes will be on the Bank of England as they uh, meet today. Well, in terms of what was doing well from the European markets, basic resources saw a bit of a bounce. Arcelor Mittal, in fact, was up close to around 4% in yesterday's trading session. 
Brent crude prices as well have been moving higher. In fact, it's recovered closer on 10% from the recent lows that we saw. And on the back of that, you did see, um, you know, a couple of emerging markets as well did do well. But the dollar, well, it's weakened overnight. The yen, in fact, uh, has moved to around 106. The dollar, dollar index has moved to around uh, 85 and a half odd. So just keep an eye on that front. Well, early morning, the Asian markets, they had opened up with good gains. But from the top, those markets have come off. The Nikkei as well as the Kospi, both of them have come off the high point of the day. In fact, the Shanghai market was trading mildly in the red. The SJX Nifty, though, at one point of time was telling you a 40-point bump up. Now it's telling you that 25 points is what you could get to see in terms of green on the screen. Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, Nigel. And now let's uh, analyze what uh, the Fed speak might mean to Indian markets and generally how Indian markets look to experts. Uh, uh, two of them join us, Arvind Sanger, managing partner, Geos for Capital management uh, and Jeffrey Dennis head global emerging market strategy at UBS uh, good evening to both of you gentlemen and thank you for staying up for us uh, Jeff first uh, uh, is there anything that the Fed said that should scare an emerging market investor uh, in terms of the slightly more hawkish note and maybe one more rate hike uh, maybe this year itself uh, than the market was originally factoring in no, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, it's a delicate situation in terms of U.S. yields and uh, going up potentially and, and, the, and the Fed tightening. But we actually thought the statement was a little bit less hawkish than anticipated because we had, we had thought they would come up with four rate hikes for 2018. In other words, the dot plot would move up by one rate hike. And that didn't happen, although, of course, the voting w was very marginal. So... Um, I think the Fed has laid its, uh, its, um, its views out very clearly. The economy, in their eyes, is picking up. Um, there's a, obviously a risk of slightly higher inflation in the early part of the year. And they're going to keep, I think, withdrawing uh, accommodation by, by raising interest rates. But I don't think we know much more about this environment for emerging markets than we knew 24 hours ago. Bonds are still sitting around 2.9%. Of course, they haven't really moved that much. The yields went up a little bit. But um, I don't think we learned that much more um, at this stage. Okay. Arvind, uh, good morning to you as well. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, do you think it's... Uh for the markets right now, it's a bit of a non-event uh, and uh, the, the emerging markets uh, would move on? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I, I would echo what your previous speaker said. At the end of the day, remember, we, all we are doing is going from extraordinarily uh, low interest rates into some semblance of, uh, you know, uh, of having a rate cycle. So uh, the idea that the global economies are so fragile uh, and emerging markets are so fragile that they can't sustain going from extraordinarily low to just low is, is, is I think, hard to believe. So, therefore, we think that, uh, you know, interest rates going back to some semblance of uh, normal range and still at the low end of normal ranges by any other historical measure in the last eight years is not going to kill either global economies or global liquidity. Clearly, we needed extraordinary liquidity during uh, the last few years to, you know, to regenerate growth. But I don't think we need it anymore because global growth is fine. And so I think these, you know, whether it's three or four rate rises are not taking interest rates into a, into a level uh, where, uh, where global economic, uh, you know, uh, growth is going to be in danger. And that's why I think we're, we're fine eventually. Okay. Arvind, hi. Good morning. So this is with regards to the FOMC, but what about India uh, in particular? You know, we were speaking with Sakti Siva of Credit Suisse just a couple of days ago, and she indicated that the valuation excesses that India has has to be corrected further for India to become an attractive buy. Um, is that your view as well, and how do you approach the markets now? Well, I think, uh, you know, we were having trouble with valuations last year, and we've talked about it, you know, uh, with you before. Uh, I think valuations... Uh, in a sense, valuations were well ahead of fundamentals uh, because earnings were always, uh, you know, uh, a couple of quarters uh, from meaningfully turning up. But I think now we've turned the corner where the earnings recovery is much more, uh, you know, much more visible. And we are seeing a more broad-based sign across many sectors of, of improving fundamentals. So I think, you know, in a sense, time itself uh, might solve the problem if the market remains range-bound. Uh, and earnings start to recover, then then the markets start to look uh, somewhat less stretched from a valuation standpoint. But clearly, uh, interest rates going up, you know, it does have the effect uh, that uh, you know the extraordinarily high PEs, which were 
somewhat justified by uh, very low interest rates. Uh, now the P is, you know, require E to go up uh, for the price to follow, and you can't just have P expansion based on low interest rates. So I think in that sense, uh, the, part of the reason why we remain somewhat patiently buying uh, into into sell-offs is uh, because uh, you know uh, stocks are not screamingly cheap where we are, you know, going out and and buying things uh, with both arms because things are. Uh, so attractive, but but we are selectively looking to buy into pullbacks. Well, uh, that E is what I'm uh, a little worried about. Hasn't it changed lately, the earnings scenario, uh, because of uh, an accelerated recognition of NPAs and provisioning that uh, the Reserve Bank has ordered? Uh, won't, won't earnings have to be brought down, both for the current year and for the next, because of uh, the uh, financials contribution? Uh, uh, Jeff, your take on that. Uh, would you say that you have to still work down earnings a bit, uh, or has the yeah. market priced in yeah. that fall? No, we, we certainly would agree with that analysis. I mean, we we argued all through last year, and indeed we think the same is this year. The same is true this year that earnings estimates are just too high in, in the market. And even before this new move with respect to the banks, we felt that. 21% consensus EPS growth in dollars this year, which is what the consensus is, was was quite uh, quite um, uh, quite far too high. We felt uh, we feel that 13, 14% is better. We also are getting about 40% of the earnings growth this year. At, the, at this point from the financial sector. And so any hit to this as a result of these new measures, you know, could could bring these numbers down again. So I think what is interesting, and this is where I agree with, with our other speaker here, that obviously there are signs the economy may be bouncing now with the fourth quarter for calendar quarter numbers being better. That will eventually come into earnings estimates, presumably. But our concern right now is the market has just got too high an estimate for earnings this year. And, and we still think the market is quite expensive. Um, as, as you know, and I've said on this program before, we, we moved our view on India from overweight to neutral at the start of the year. India is down about 7% in dollar terms this year. So um, I think it's got a ways to go still before it gets sufficiently, quote unquote, cheap or more attractive in valuation terms to bring a lot of foreign investors back. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey, the other point that I wanted to discuss discuss with you is uh, particularly for India as we speak Brent crude is back to 70 you think that's mm. emerging as a as a big risk for us well it certainly is I mean uh, as a fact it's a, it is it's 70 dollars um, that is a concern for India of course India is one of the um, emerging markets most um, uh, traditionally viewed as, as being negatively hit by high uh, high oil prices. Although there's a lot of emerging markets, frankly, that are in that situation. Um, we tend not to think oil is going to continue to move up from here. Our view is much more that oil will average in the mid-60s for Brent this year. So I think while we would worry about where oil prices are now for the follow-through impact on, of course, the current account and also on inflation, therefore possibly on in interest rates, um, I suspect we're not going to see it go much higher from here. Now, part of our view at UBS is that the dollar is going lower, and of course that could push commodity prices higher. But I think the story, frankly, on oil this year is one more of stability um, in the 60 to to seventy dollar range rather than looking for a further sharp um, appreciation. So we may not be far away from this um, this oil price move uh, petering out once again. Mm. Arvind, uh, you did mention that you're patiently buying into the pullback in the Indian markets. Uh, what looks attractive to you now? Well, I mean, I think uh, one of the things where I, I think uh, maybe uh, the, uh, you know, your previous comments uh, uh, or, or your colleagues' previous comments about the banking sector. I think the banking sector actually is uh, looking uh, a lot better. If you look at uh, some of the recent uh, examples, whether it's Binani Cement or uh, some of the steel assets that are being bid on, actually what's ending up happening is that the recoveries for the banks uh, are turning out to be higher than what we had assumed. So, you know, in terms of... Uh, what the market was assuming, forget what they have written down, what RBI has forced them to write down or whatever. But I think because the cycle in important sectors like cement and, and more importantly, steel ha have turned up so dramatically, actually you could see some of the major areas where, uh, you know, uh, the write-offs may, you may actually get some write-backs if you get more than 50 cents on the dollar back 
uh, on, on your write-offs, then, uh, then, then there could be some write-backs. Now, now there may be other areas where write-offs uh, still need to be taken, but I think the market has been prepared for worse. And I would argue that, again, because of some of the sector seeing recovery, uh, there could be opportunities there. So we think, you know, uh, banks like ICICI and Access Bank, which are oversold, and maybe even one or two PSU banks, there could be opportunities uh, because uh, as the economic cycle turns and as we start to find that uh, buyers for assets are showing up with willingness to pay uh, more than what the banks have, in some cases, written down assets to, uh, there will be some which will be lower than that, but there might be some higher than that, which I think is a positive surprise. So I think that's an area where we're finding uh, interesting uh, interesting opportunities. Oh, yes, one hopes, uh, of course, today we also had a positive report from Credit Suisse on SBI, largely on the lines you are talking about, uh, uh, Arvind. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an extremely litigious uh, affair. Let's hope it works that way. But you said you are, uh, you know, you're, you are buying, even if you're not rushing in. What else, other than the corporate banks, the ICS access that you spoke about? Well, others would be more selective one-off situations where if the stocks get, you know, so it's not like a sector call. You know, uh, we may be buying a company in the construction space that we've had an eye on in the mid-cap space that got attractive to us, uh, you know, uh, with the recovery in uh, uh, both uh, 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 the road sector has continued to improve and even with the housing, with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, affordable housing and, and other measures. So, you know, it may be something in that. Uh, but I, I would say that there are, you know, select special situations uh, where we are finding uh, opportunities. Uh, I wouldn't say that we are making a broad base. You know, uh, certainly uh, the consumer stocks, uh, which trade at, you know, P's in the 30s, are not anywhere near the kind of valuations where uh, we're going to be rushing in, even at these, uh, e even with some of the pullbacks, uh, because I think a lot of the good news in terms of long-term growth dynamics there are rather fully discarded in the stock prices. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, I wouldn't say that there's any any specific sector, and the banking is the only one uh, where I would make a somewhat larger sectoral okay. call that things are, you know, things are not as bad as people are fearing. Uh, but other than that, it's more uh, one-off, bottom-up, uh, mid-cap stocks. Oh, what about IT, Arvind? Uh, that's had a big year. Uh, in fact, the last six months of last year, and that's continued this year as well. I think that that's that's an interesting area where we are more interested in some of the mid caps where you know they've traditionally traded at big discounts. What might happen in this cycle is that unlike the large guys, you know, uh, if you look at the last you know decade, it was the big guys who benefited, and the mid caps struggled uh, uh, in terms of uh, scale. Uh, I think in the new, more digital, more uh, you know, uh, uh, technology-driven uh, outsourcing. Uh, some of the mid-cap players could be more advantageously play placed if they have niches in which they have uh, uh, significant uh, capabilities and, and, and market leaderships. Those become more important rather than just a big, broad-based uh, technology outsourcing company. So I think our interest is uh, in some selective names even in that place. Okay, so uh, finally, before we wrap up then, Jeff, just wanted your view on how you're approaching India for the rest of the year. I heard your views earlier, but in terms of a move, do you think that this could just be a year where we flatline and at worst see a time correction? Or are we looking at a major downfall through the course of the year? I, I don't think we're looking for a major downfall through the course of the year. It very much, of course, depends where markets overall go. Given our views about the reasonably positive global financial market backdrop, which means we don't think bond yields are going materially above 2.9% of the U.S. We, we think the dollar is going lower. The, we think the Fed is going to raise rates four times, which I think is, is pretty much priced into markets, maybe not entirely. These are good conditions with the global economy being strong. So our call is EM goes up 17% this year. Um, and I think India will, will probably get back into the black, taking the year as a whole. Um, but we, at this point, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be a major outperforming. Bear in mind, as we've addressed before in this program, what's going on here is the domestic investors that were holding up the market last year by, by pulling money out of property in particular, moving into the equity market, whereas the foreigners have been overweight India and very, very overweight India for a long time have been reducing those overweights. When the valuations get interesting again, they'll move back into the market. I've got no doubt at all. Um, it's just I'm not sure this is enough at this point to, to give us an outperform taking the year as a whole. But if our overall view is correct, I think India um, will eventually make some sort of recovery taking the year as a whole. All right. Gentlemen, on that optimistic note, uh, 
Arvind and Jeff, thank you very much for joining in and parsing both the global queues and the domestic queues for us. Uh, uh, buying, nibbling is what the experts are telling us, but they will wait for lower levels. Uh, we take a break. On that note, we are coming back with uh, TV18's top 10 list of stocks to watch out for today.